So recently I've been pursued and plagued by the main question of why do we write in a modern day and age? And it's one of those questions that's always been in the back of my mind and I, I can't seem to get rid of it. And so that is what I've collected in this notebook, my findings on that question. And it's what I want to share with you today. The main question of why do we write and why should you continue to write in the modern day and age? And so this first came to me when I was reading Reflections on the Guillotine by Albert Camus. And I thought for every one of him, there's about 10 or 20 others who are mimics, poor mimics, I must say, of him. And so I wondered, why do we even continue to write when there are such greats as Camus? And so that's not to state that writing unnecessarily is a failure, but it's more to say that writing is an attempt at success, not all can achieve it, but you try. And so with so many greats out there, so many great books through the centuries, why do I continue to write? And as well, most, of, if not all, of what I'm going to write has already been written in the Library of Babel or been put in better words by some great writer. So many, many years ago, we, we had some amazing writers. And of course, it's always a question that people want. Why do we write or how to become a better writer? And so these writers were, of course, asked that question. Why do you write in your personal opinion? Which I always thought was a bit of an odd question because you never ask somebody, why don't you write? You, are, you always ask them, why do they? But maybe that's just a cultural thing. But as I've said, I have got some notes in here, uh, or on the back of this notebook, of three authors, George Orwell, Terry Pratchett, and Jean-Paul Sartre. Three de very different people, one political, one philosophical, and one fantasy, on why they write. And so, I, I, as I've said, I've collected the three here, and I'm just going to read them to you. So George Orwell stated that there are four motives to writing and that every writer has these four motives inside of them to a certain degree. And those four motives are sheer egoism, aesthetic enthusiasm, historical impulse and political purpose. Terry Pratchett stated that writing is the most fun you can have by yourself. So Sartre, uh, his description is in Why Write, Sartre's description of the final goal of art is to recover the world by giving it to be seen as it is, but as if it had been its own source in human freedom. Sartre holds the belief that the writer appeals to the reader and his freedom to collaborate in the production of his work. In layman's terms, you write because you are. And it wouldn't be much of a video if I didn't give my own opinion on this. And the fact is, is that it seems that in the modern day and age, most people write for profit. Now, that is not to state that people in the past didn't write for profit. There were just fewer than what there are now. And if you ever get the chance, do Google the different types of writers. There are articles, videos, all about these jokes about different types of writers, but there will always be one listed as something like an easy peasy writer, someone who thinks, oh, writing a book isn't that difficult, and I can string two words together, how hard can it be? And so they go ahead at it, not realising that the act of writing and the act of writing literature are two very different things. And so from the quotes given earlier, I, I need to talk about why the greats does not mean that they are specifically right. For beauty is in the eye of the beholder, Shakespearean quote there. And so many more could state that just because they're famous doesn't mean that it's good. It doesn't mean that it's immediately imbued with wisdom and greatness and will learn for the rest of humanity. And that brings me on to the next Shakespearean quote, which is, a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. So in other terms, that is to say that even if they were famous or not, the book is written great. 
And so, whether it was published by, let's say, George Orwell or some unknown author, it should get the recognition it deserves as it is correctly written. And it does seem that if, let's say, George Orwell, at this point, a well-rounded individual, let's say it's the mid-40s, he's released a few books, great, and he's got a name for himself. Now, let's say he were to release another book that had 2D characters, plot holes, and just not really well-rounded. The majority of people would look at this in the biased view, saying George Orwell's books are great, therefore this one must be. And it would seem that only the intellectuals would actually see what it is. And so to put this in more layman's terms, I am stating that, let's say George Orwell, at this point, mid-40s, he's written a few books, got a bit of a name for himself, and he would write a book. But this one is terrible. He wrote it hurriedly, it's got plot holes, 2D characters, it's just altogether terrible. The majority of people, the working man, etc., would see that and state all of his other books are great. They're critically acclaimed, and so this one must be. But then, only the intelligentsia are actually saying, wait a minute, it's not the best. It's got 2D characters, and they're the only ones who are actually coming forward and stating it for what it is. It's a biased view, basically. And it's these people who are above the title of it and who recognise that literary works are there for the betterment of humanity and for an occasional laugh, realise that, in fact, it's not a good piece. But if the book was written correctly, and again, in this Universe, there's no such thing as correct, but there are some things as common justice. But a book that was written correctly, and let's say correctly with a very loose term, because there's no correct way to write a book. But what I'm saying in this term is things like there's a good plot development, a character arc, and it has love and care put into it. Then no matter if it was released by George Orwell, Terry Pratchett, or some unnamed person, it should still get the the acclaim that it should get from both parties. But we all know that's not really the case in a modern world as there are so many great books nowadays that go below the radar and don't get the recognition they deserve. And there's so many idiotic books that just get thrown out there into the public with millions of funding behind it. But that's a topic for another video and possibly another book. And so whether it's written well or not, the actual act of starting a book, finishing a book, all of the in-between, that's a great act. And a person who ever does that should pat themselves on the back, whether they keep it unpublished or published. But what the main point is that books can rise up from all areas of the globe, everywhere. But they would especially rise up in conflict. And most great books have been written during times of conflict. And so that brings us on to the next part of this video, which is Books of Conflict. And so we need to understand that to this day there is conflict in the world. And unfortunately, it does seem like that's just going to be a fact of life we have to grow with. In the future, there will be conflict. But... From every conflict, World War I, World War II, Ukraine, Iraq, everything. Hidden behind the rubble are a bunch of rebellious individuals. And by that, I do not mean rebellious as in, you know, smashing windows and smoking behind the school and swearing. I mean rebellious individuals. Absolutely deadly individuals. A fear to God. And these are the writers. And so it seems to be that in conflict, there is always that spark that brings writers, poets and artists from the ground, such as Alfred Lord Tennyson, George Orwell and Sol Zanishtin, who I've spoken about in an earlier episode uh, just up here. And it's just like George Orwell said, it's historical impulses and political reasons. Those are two of the four primary reasons to write. And so... We've already got two of them down. Living in a time of conflict 
And whether the conflict is political or war or actual destruction, there is always that reason to write about the injustices and write about what is good, what is bad. The bottom line is that one should not throw themselves into the act of writing, as in typing on a keyboard, expecting loads of money and to become a multi-million author. But the person should write knowing that the book has so much power than they could possibly imagine, and so to treat it with the care and respect it needs. And so understanding that the book is there, the book, the art, the poem, everything is there for the betterment of mankind and to teach future generations. And so that should spark and ensue you to rush to your keyboard now and start writing ab about this. Ooh, that brings me to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed. So for now, I wish you a great happy new year and I will see you all in the next video.